Not because I've been so faithful. Not because I've been so good. You've always been there for me to provide my every need. You were there when I was lonely. You were there in all my pain. Guiding my footsteps. Shelter from Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Come on and say, Jesus, I love you. Yeah, because you care. beginning and the end, my strong tower, my dearest and best friend, and it was you that made my life complete. Yes, I do. Because you can.
have to do what you do. I love you. That's why I love you. 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 Because you love you. Jesus, I love you. Come on. Now because I've been so faithful, now because I've been so good, Jesus, I love you because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Come on and say, Jesus, I love you. Yeah, because you care. beginning and the end, my strong tower, my dearest and best friend, and it was you that made my life complete. Yes, I do. Because you can.
Praise the Lord. Just a brief announcement. Someone's driving a black Cadillac. The number is 7XBR963. Please move your car. It's in the fire lane. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice today. Because precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. So we're going to celebrate Brother Garcia today, saints. Amen. You please remain standing. Help me sing a little of this. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. proceed with our program. We will have invocation by, men, uh, by Elder Earl Scott. Then we will bless with the scripture reading, Old Testament evangelist Terry Cox, New Testament Elder James Harvey. Then we will bless with the selection from the vessels of love. Please remain standing until after prayer and scripture. Father God, we come to say thank you. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. For Lord, you are good and you are kind. Lord, as we came in, we heard the song about your grace and your mercy. And Lord, we worship you because you're God and you're God all by yourself. Lord, we realize that we can't make it through this day, so we rely on you for your strength. We rely on you for your guidance and we rely on you for your mercy and your kindness. Lord, we pray for the family, Father God, that you would comfort them in this hour of bereavement. Lord, we know what your word says, but we trust you, Father God. We dare not lean to our own understanding, but we thank you, Father God, that you know best. Father God, bless the message, message and the messenger. Lord, as we proceed forward in this service, we pray that you would comfort. Lord, we pray that you would heal and we pray that you would deliver. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory, for it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will be reading Old Testament Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. 
my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing. If I can help somebody as I pass along. If I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody that's traveling. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian, Art. If I can bring back beauty to a world of rock, if I can spread love's message as the mass. Taught, then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall. I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Then
if I can have, if I can have, if I can have somebody as I pass along, then. the Lord, my living will not be in vain. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. When that last trumpet sound, the dead in Christ is going to rise first. And we that are alive and remain are going to be caught up with them to meet them in the air. That's going to be a wonderful day, a wonderful morning. So that's why we don't say the saints goodbye. Hallelujah. We'll say so long. I'll see you in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll see you in the morning. Amen. Let's continue. God bless you. We will now have expressions of love from West Angeles Church by Evangelist Annie Fault. Reflections and acknowledgement by our director, Dr. Tanya Lewis. Then we will have reflections from Michael Garcia, the grandson. Winston is at Nobleton, a cousin. And then we will be blessed with another selection with the Vessels Choir. God bless you. Come in that order. Good morning, family. On behalf of presiding bishop, Charles Blake and Lady May Blake, Dr. Tanya Lewis Bereavement Director, Vessels of Love Bereavement Team and the Vessel of Love Choir and the West Angeles Church of God in Christ family. To the family members and friends that are here today, we would like to extend our heartfelt condolences to you on your recent passing of Maurice Jones Garcia. Often words seem to be inadequate to express sadness and grief when loved one leaves our presence. But know that West Angeles is here for you to support you in prayer during your grieving process. We're praying for you to have peace that brings comfort, the courage to face the days ahead and the loving memories of Maurice Jones Garcia to be with you forever in your hearts. Isaiah 53 tells us that Jesus was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief and bore our grief and carried our sorrows. May I encourage you to put your trust in Jesus Christ. He promised to give you peace that passes all, surpasses all understanding and that uh, you just trust him and trust that he'll be with you to carry you through this hour. And I want to leave with you a quote. Family is where life begins and love never ends. May the blessing of the Lord be with you. Maurice Jones Garcia. To some, he is dad, our pops, to others, granddad, uncle, cousin, and the like. But to all, he earned the title of Mr. Garcia. Not physically tall in stature, but easily stands in the company of such men as Wilt Chamberlain, Magic Johnson, LeBron James. The Lord knew that 
we could not handle more than he housed in Dr. I mean our, our dad Garcia's uh, vessel. So he made him else me little because that's all y'all can handle. Amen. Can handle no more than that. A honorable, caring, sincere, sacrificial, protective, and definitely loving man describes Dad Garcia. A man whose wife passed early on, leaving him with 10 children, many of them young, but he dug in his heels and he kept his family together. A man who even though his children freed him to seek out another companion, he refused to do so, choosing rather to protect and focus on his children. Those children who have grown up and made his heart glad and proud with the success in life that they are experiencing because of the input from Dad Garcia. A man with such a great and huge legacy that his name will never disappear from the earth. As one of West Angeles Church fine security personnel, he guarded that 30th Street parking lot, that big old parking lot over there, just like it was his own. So it's no wonder that people near and far, Texas, Belize, Nevada, Delaware, and other locations have altered their schedules and their funds to be in attendance of today's service. It is with great joy that I say thank you, Lord, for the privilege I had of personally knowing and loving Mr. Marcia, Maurice Jones Garcia. I'm going to ask you to do something, um, audience, because he's definitely worthy to be honored. I'm going to ask you to stand and put your hands together and let's salute Mr. Maurice Jones Garcia for the life that he lived, for the man that he was, the man of integrity, the man of protection, the man of love, the man of honor. And he was funny too, amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. He had a sense of humor. Acknowledgement of our sincere appreciation. We appreciate each expression of love to our family during the illness of our beloved Maurice Garcia. The family wishes to convey our sincerest appreciation for your prayers and support during our period of bereavement. We are truly grateful to have wonderful and caring friends, church members, and neighbors like you. Your words have been thoughtful. Special thanks to Bishop Charles E. Blake and the West Angeles family, Bishop Norman Hutchins and Frontlines, Ministry of Dover, Delaware, Yours truly, Dr. Tanya Lewis, House of Winston Funeral Home, and definitely not least, Ms. Delma Dixon. God bless you. Thank you so much for the love that you've given this family. Michael, for the remarks now. Michael. And cousin. Hello everyone. My name is Michael Garcia. I am the eldest son of Cecil Garcia and one of 38 grandchildren. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to start my reflection today. Um, but as I walked into this building, I realized it's been approximately 30 years since I've been in this room. And the memories that I had about coming to church, obviously to praise Jesus and, and to build myself up spiritually, but my mother can attest that one of the greatest joys of coming to this church was seeing my grandfather every Sunday. And it was just as a child, getting through the service was the tough part. And being able to go out and see him, give him a hug, he would always say, Mikey, my boy. <laughs> he was the only person that called me Mikey. And it was something that always just filled my Sunday, filled my day. 
So I want to share with each and every one of you and just let you know that his physical presence is no longer with us. And as a young lady was speaking earlier about us grieving, I don't really have any grief because I received a lot of love, a lot of inspiration from my grandfather. Well, we called him Pops. And he shared and brought a lot of people together. So as I will miss him, he is still with me spiritually. He is still with each and every one of you. When I arrived here, I'm from, I live in Florida now, I got to see a lot of my family, some I haven't seen in many, many, many years, some I've met today for the first time. He does that. He did that when he was here, and he's still doing it today. So I want to make sure that each and every one of us, because I know my time is coming up, to continue to share and spread his love. Continue to connect and build bonds and relationships. Allow our cousins to know one another and have that same joy, that same inspiration that I got from my grandfather every Sunday. I want you guys to be able to experience that with your children, your children's children, and allow his spirit to live on forever. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'd like to, first of all, convey my deepest condolence to the entire family. My uncle, Maurice Jones Garcia, I call him Uncle Mo. What I remember of him, he was an honest, great, loving, hardworking man, who from the very beginning, I got to know as a little kid growing up in Dangriga would always give me advice. He always told me, Masagarabata how buduhayo. That's in our language, Garifuna. That means that never pass up your relatives. So he would pass every day on his bicycle. I'll be in the tailor shop. And he said, Berto, he goes to Abugo Show. He, go, he don't say, where's your mother? He said, he goes to Anitu. That means, where's my sister? So I would go and get, get her for him. So he would stop. They would stand there by the fence, and they just talk, talk, talk. Oh, I got to go do this. Then he forgot what he was going to do. They just got into the conversation so deep. So that was something he did every day because of the love of his family. And when he got out here to the States, I used to come visit him over here in the parking lot. And the first thing he'd ask me, how you doing? Second thing, Ida Tiangi Nito. He talking about my mother. And so he would tell me, Barubo ta arihanamugo. That means bring her so I could see her. So I would go, whenever I come back visit him, I'll get her and take her there. I say, Uncle Mo wants to see you. Okay, okay. So I would take her along. And so that was routine. You know, he was a loving man. He was a man that loves his family. And he worked so hard that I remember growing up in Dangriga, and back then, we all used to have uh, kerosene gas stoves. And when there was no kerosene, no way in Dangriga to be found, you could go to Mr. Garcia's house, and you could get kerosene. And he supplied the entire back of town where he all raised, and that was nice. So that's something I remember about him. He was hardworking and always thinking about ways to improve his family. He gave good advice, advice that I still live by today, you know. And as we could see, the fruits are right here. The fruits are all productive. And there's something to be commended of him. He did such a great job while he was here, and his great memories and his work will never be forgotten. His spirit will live on because he believed in God. And once you believe in God, your spirit stays here forever. So he left indelible footprints on earth that we got to carry forward with. With that said, I'd like God to continue blessing each and every one of you. And thank you guys for coming out. 
God bless you. resolution by evangelist Linda Barney. Afterwards, we will be blessed with the video tribute. 
And then we will have Celebration of Life by Pastor Caring Hutching, daughter, a selection by the Vessels Choir. Then we'll be blessed with the Word of God. I should say from our own Bishop Norman Hudson, former man of God here at West Angeles. Let's just give him a hand. This is the son-in-law of Brother Garcia. And he's just going to take it when he gets this pulpit. He's just going to let the Lord have his way. He was here the last time, and I kept saying, sing, sing. But he was so happy after preaching, he didn't feel like singing. And I just wanted to stand up and say, you didn't sing. But today, we're just going to let him have his way. Amen? Let's say amen. Resolution from the Frontline Ministries, 516A Jefferic Boulevard, Dover, Delaware, 19901. To Pastor Kevin, Karen Hutchins and family, we, the ministerial staff, departments and auxiliaries, and members of Frontline Ministries express our heartfelt sympathies to our Pastor Karen Hutchins in the passing of her father, Brother Maurice Garcia. We stand in prayer with you and your family in humble submission to the will of our loving God. Those we love can never be more than a thought away, for as long as there's a memory, they live in our hearts to stay. Whereas Brother Maurice Garcia, affectionately known as Pop, was a loving father who cherished his family, and his passing will leave a deep void in their lives, we pray that fond memories will be their strength and comfort. Whereas Brother Maurice Garcia was a faithful member of West Angeles Church of God in Christ, under the leadership of Bishop Charles E. Blake, he dedicated his untiring service to the church and the members for several years. Brother Garcia loved the Lord and God's people. Whereas, while facing some health challenges, Brother Garcia stood on God's word and continued to embrace life and allow the joy of the Lord to be his strength, his life exemplified how to trust God in all situations. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the Frontline Ministries family, mourn with Pastor Karen and her family and stand ready to share the genuine love and comfort which God the Father shares so freely with us. We commend our steadfast love to you and your family. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be presented to the family and a copy will be maintained in the records. Humbly submitted on this ninth day of August, 2018, the ministerial staff, departments, and auxiliaries and members of Frontline Ministries, Dover, Delaware, Bishop Norman E. Hutchins, Senior Pastor. True Foundation Transformation, Transformation Church, 8801 South Normal Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60620. Bishop-elect Larry A. Brookins, Senior Pastor. Dr. C.L. Brookins, organizer and pastor emeritus. With love and esteem, the pastor and entire membership of the True Foundation Transformation Church extend our sincere condolences to the family of Mr. Maurice Garcia and offer the following resolution. Whereas it has pleased our Heavenly Father to call home Mr. Garcia, father of Pastor Karen Hutchins and father-in-law of Bishop Norman Hutchins, 
from labor to reward. And whereas he has completed his earthly journey and now leaves a legacy that will be remembered by many. Be it resolved that while he will be missed by family, friends, and loved ones, we know we bow in humble submission to the will of God. We join in the celebration of his life and commend you to the one who knows best. You have our sincere prayers. Be it resolved that we express our gratitude to God for his life and pray that you find comfort in each loving memory and peace through your faith in the only wise and almighty God. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family, other relatives and friends because of us who have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We resolve that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and copies be placed with the church records. Respectfully submitted on the ninth day of August, 2018. 2 Timothy 4 and 17 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Dr. C.L. Brookins, Pastor Emeritus, Bishop-elect Larry A. Brookins, Senior Pastor. second or another minute, not an hour or another day, but at this moment with my arms outstretched, I need you to make a way as you have done so many times before, through a window or an open door, I stretch my hands to Come rescue me, I need you right away. I need you now. I need you now. I need you now. I need you now. 
God bless everyone that's here to give a send off to my father-in-law, Maurice. We're truly gonna miss him. He he was such an awesome, awesome person. Um, I'm the mother of Michael Garcia. Um, I'm here to read the letter that the kids are writing to their father. And what they want to say is, say, thank you, Dad. When we think about you, there's no words that can describe our love for you. You taught us to value life and each other. You made our childhood so much fun and could never tell when you were going through any rough times. He always could hide that very well. We thank you for raising all 10 children after the death of our mother. We will honor your last words by continuing to love each other and not allow anyone to come between us. It's undeniable that you were the best dad we were blessed to have. You were an example of kindness, compassion, and integrity. You are our family 
our family's rock and tower of strength. Your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren will miss you immensely. Forever love, the Garcias. Good afternoon, everyone. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so very kindly for your love and your support of coming to join us in this grand celebration of my dad, Mr. Maurice Jones Garcia. Certainly want to give thanks to Bishop Charles E. Blake and Lady Mae Blake and the entire West Angeles family for allowing and affording us this opportunity to have my dad's homegoing celebration here. And we certainly want to thank mom, Dr. Tanya Lewis, for everything. I tell you, this woman made it happen. She is my spiritual mother, friend, and confidant, and I truly thank God for her. I thank God for the vessels. Come on, let's put our hands together for the vessels. We thank God for them. Yes, we truly thank God for the vessels, for everything that you all have done. And I truly honor my husband, Bishop Norman Hutchins, for standing by my side and for being here with me. Mr. Maurice Garcia was born on September 22, 1923, in Dangriga, Belize, to Agapito and Susan Garcia. He received his heavenly wings on July 31st, 2018, after a period of illness. Maurice was a devout Catholic who later accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior through the understanding of scriptures. Maurice met and married Francisca, who was the love of his life. Through that union, 10 children were born. He loved being family, he loved being around family and friends, and was always ready to give them some strong advice, as you've already heard. Maurice was a very studious man. He migrated to the U.S. in 1980 after the death of our mother, his best friend, Francisca. His love and passion for his children was highly exemplified through everything he did. In Belize, he was employed as the manager of Texaco gas station of Dangriga Town. After relocating to the U.S., he became employed as a security guard here at West Angeles Church of God in Christ, where Bishop Charles E. Blake Sr. serves as the pastor. He was known as a hard-working man who paid his way through life. He was very well respected amongst his peers. He is preceded in death by his father and mother, Agapito and Susan Garcia, his wife, Francisca, brothers, Cecil, Stephen, and Babaco, sister, Alvina Garcia, Simeon, son, Lloyd, granddaughters, Kiana Garcia Taylor, and Stacy Garcia Gray, grandson, Brian, and son-in-law, Leroy Augustine. Left to cherish his memories are nine children, Susan Augustine, Cecil Delane Hardiman, Maurice Jr., Barbara, Frederick, Ivan, Rose, Rose Lopez, Andrew, Elsie Norris, Karen Hutchins, my husband Norman, Margaret Pryor, and a host grandchildren, great grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins, caregiver, the love of his life, Delma Dixon, a very special person who meant the world to him. Mom, Tanya Lewis, he called her Dr. Lewis, and a host of friends at Forever Care 
adult day health care center where he actually was every day. Dad, grandfather, great-grandfather, and uncle Maurice Garcia, you will forever live in our hearts. We love you and thank God that he blessed us with you in our lives. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. One of these old mornings And it won't be very long You will look for me And I'll be gone You see I'm going to a place I have nothing, nothing to fear And I'm gonna walk around Walk around heaven All day Oh, when I get to heaven I'm gonna jump and shout We will hear from Bishop Norman Hutchins, pastor of Frontline Ministries, Dover, Delaware, and a son here at West Angeles. God bless you, Bishop. Would you come at this time? Let's stand and receive him. God bless you. 
God bless you, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It is with Jesus' joy that I greet each and every one of you this afternoon. We do give honor and reverence to the pastor and the bishop of this house, our spiritual father, Bishop Charles E. Blake, and to Lady May Blake. We praise and thank God for the vessels of love on today and to Dr. Tanya Lewis and to those who shares the pulpit with us on today and to all of the friends of the family, well-wishers, and to my brothers and my sisters. We greet all of you in the blessed name of Jesus. I cannot begin to tell you what an honor it is for me um, to be a part of the family and to have this privilege and this opportunity to share words of inspiration to you. Every one of you that I know personally have been such a special part of my life. And uh, of course, I grew up uh, in a large family, not knowing my family. But when I married my wife, the Lord gave me an extended family. And I have a lot of brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews and cousins. And Amen. I've learned to eat stuff I didn't like. I love rice and beans now. Amen. And oxtail. And plantains. I could go on and on. Uh, matter of fact, I'm starting to feel a little hungry right now now that, I'm, now that I think about it. But you guys have been so special to me. And when I was asked to eulogize Pop Garcia, there, would, there was no way I would say no to that. Because I need you to know, although I did not have a father who raised me, he became one of my spiritual fathers. And I've loved him and will continue to love him, amen, for the rest of my life. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, And we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have another building and house, not made by hand, but eternal, in to heaven. You know, when death gives you a physical eviction notice, heaven is waiting for you to foreclose on your mansion. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I was driving one day and I read a billboard sign that said, life is short, death is sure. Sin is the cause, Jesus is the cure. The real answer to life is not how many cars you own, how many houses you can buy, how much money you can save. But it's how well you live your life while you're on this earth. Knowing that it is appointed unto man once to die. And then the Bible says after death comes the judgment. All of us, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, will one day have to stand before the almighty God. And we will have to give an account for the deeds that has been done in our bodies. But I'm so glad that the Bible has given us a remedy. The Bible has given us a way out. For the Bible declares that if we confess Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we can be saved. Saved from all of our sins. 
this is a homegoing celebration. Amen. You know, I, I've never called him Maurice Jones Garcia. I've always just called him Pops because that's all I've ever known him to be is Pops. And one of my brothers, actually the oldest brother, Cecil, who is responsible for many of the family members from, for knowing who Jesus Christ is today. Him and I had a discussion, and uh, we were talking, and he was telling me that Pops, of course, was raised Catholic. And when he was trying to convert him to Christendom, he told me, he said, Pops told him he was born Catholic, or he going to die Catholic. But thank God that Brother Cecil did not give up on him. He kept right on pressing the point that you need to know Jesus. You see, uh, uh, Pops worked, uh, he worked around church, but church just wasn't in him. I remember days when I would be here at West Angeles preaching and he would be at the back, he would be listening and then when I finished and after service, he would say, my boy, that was a good sermon, my boy. You preach, man. You preach, man. Good, man. But then I thank God that Cecil didn't give up on him. And finally, amen, amen, Pops accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and his Savior. A powerful man of God. Amen. A father of fathers who loves his children. Very respectful, humble man. I've never met a man like him. Amen. Who can be so lovable, but at the same time, he can be very, very serious. Very wise. Amen. Speaks several languages. Amen. Fluent in Spanish. Fluent in Garifuna. And... Uh, Get him upset. He got some other languages he can give you too. <laughs> but we love him very, very, very much. It would be a different story here today. You would have a reason to really, really grieve and feel real bad if there weren't confidence in our heart that one day he had received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And although grieving is a part of the process, I just want you to remember there's so much that you can be thankful for. Number one, we can be thankful that God allowed him to live 94 years. 94 years. Amen. On this wonderful earth. Amen. And you've had so much time to spend with him, to laugh with him, and to love on him, and to be fathered by him. Not to mention myself, or, uh, there's not been a time that my wife and I would visit Los Angeles, California, where we wouldn't go by, amen, and visit him. And of course, if you really wanted him to be happy, stop by the Belizean restaurant and buy him one of them buns. <laughs> We'd get him a bun. And the only thing that upset him about the bun was we wouldn't give him the whole thing. We'd cut him off a piece. And he said, God, give me the whole thing, man. Give me the whole thing. And he would eat that bun like it was a million dollars. Not only that, but to see him in his declining stages, and yet you could still see the joy on his face. He always made the best out of a bad situation. Oftentimes, we would go visit him uh, at the center where he would go during the day. And I told him one time, I said, Pop, you know what? You still got it. I said, because these sisters up in here, they're all, they all all over you. He said, yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> and it was always refreshing to just be in his presence, knowing, amen, that he loved God. I want you to know that he loved West Angeles. He loved West Angeles. 
And even in his early stages of dementia, there are certain things about this church he never will forget. People he would never forget. Things he would never forget that impacted his life. I want to thank God, amen, for Sister Delma Dixon, who was his caretaker for some 11 years, a home. She provided a home for him, who is a part of the family. We love her very, very much. And Sister Delma, we thank God because we know that spending that amount of time with someone creates a bond. But we're celebrating his life on today because we know that he's in a better place now where the wicked will cease from troubling and where the weary shall be at rest. Paul said we're going to shake off this mortal and put on immortality and we'll be caught up to meet him in the twinkling of an eye. Now I got to tell you this little story because this is my history with Pops. I knew him before I knew he had children. I hadn't met any of his children. As a matter of fact, I was the director of social services at the time here at West Angeles, and oftentimes when I would have some clients that didn't want to take no as an answer, he would sometimes assist me. And it was during that time I had no idea. But it would be a few years later, I was uh, right across the street here, which would, see, which would be back this way now, Crenshaw and Jefferson. Y'all remember New Life Records? That was the place we used to go and buy music. This young lady walks in, passing out flyers to her home church for a youth service. She gave me a copy. I asked her a question about the flyer, and she said, yes, sir. And I said, wait a minute, yes, sir. I said, I'm young as you. See? <laughs> and needless to say, I went to that youth service. And I kept going to those services until finally I built the nerve to ask her if we could have lunch together. She agreed. We went out to lunch. We had lunch together. And after that, I went on a tour. I was gone for almost a year or so. When I came back, we made that connection again. I was in a play and... I'll never forget this. It was at the Wilter, Wil, the Wilton Theater. And after the play, we went and had lunch, a late lunch. And she said to me, she said, um, I want you to know that I'm not looking for a boyfriend. I'm not looking for a one-night stand. I'm looking for somebody that will love God better than they can love me. And I, I, I said to her, I said, well, I want you to know that I'm not looking for a girlfriend. <laughs> and I'm not looking for a one-night stand, but I'm looking for somebody that's going where I believe God is getting ready to take me. <laughs> and so we agreed that night, and we covered it together, and our plan was to be married. But she says, but you got to meet my dad. Now, remember, I didn't know who he was. Didn't know, I, did have, I didn't have a clue. And she put so much fear in me that <laughs> if he doesn't approve of it, it's not going to happen. She gave me the history of the family and how he raised the children by himself and all of that. And so finally when we set the date for me to meet him, I prayed all the way. God, whoever this man is, please, Lord, let him like me because I'm in love with his daughter. We happened to pull up to West Angeles, and I'm trying to figure out why we're here. <laughs> when I got out and we walked, in, and when I turned the corner, I saw him and he saw me. He looked at me and he says, Hey, me boy. And I says, Pops, 
Yeah, man, how you do, man? I'm not seeing you a long time. And I said, this is your dad? Bob Garcia is your dad? And when I told him I was in love with his daughter and I wanted to marry his daughter, he didn't say nothing to me. He just talked to her. You take care of this man, this good man. This good man. <laughs> and him and I have been close ever since. Amen. Such a loving man. And he loves his children. He loves his daughters. He wants, them, he wants to see all of his family blessed. And what you can take away from this day is all of those personal lessons that you have learned. You've not just learned from the things that he's shown you, but you've learned from the mistakes that he's exposed to you as well. And you allow that to carve out your destiny and your purpose. So that you too, when that day comes, that you're laid in front of an altar. That it can be said about you that you fought a good fight. That you kept the faith. And that you finished your course. And that there's laid up for you a crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to you. Amen. On that day. Pops already fought his fight. The first time we saw him after he had transitioned through life, you can see peace all on his face. But that same road that he has already traveled, you and I, we're going to have to travel one day. And we want it to be said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen, somebody. And all you got to do is accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and begin to live a life of righteousness so that when your day come, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for them that love him. For we know that if this earthly house of this tabernacle will dissolve. We have another building and house not made by hand, but eternal. I said eternal. Eternal into heaven. And one day we're going to have to cross over into eternity. And I want to hear the Lord say to me, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I want to hear him say, you've been faithful over a few things. Now you can come on up and receive your just reward. I know family is painful right now to see pops laying across this altar. But I come to tell you that you will smile again. I come to tell you, you will laugh again. One day you're going to be driving down the road and you're going to be thinking about something that he said and a smile is going to come on your face. One day you're going to be in the house and you're going to think about something that you did, a man that brought joy to him and it's going to put a smile on your face. But better than that, I want you to put a smile on God's face by telling the Lord, I want you in my life. I want to be saved from my sins. I want to be set free. I want the peace of God on my life. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. For we know if this earthly house of this tabernacle dissolved, we got another building not made by hand, but eternal, eternal, eternal come on clap your hands and praise the Lord come on clap your hands and praise the Lord yes that's it it's never too late as long as there's life in your body you can turn it around 
Remain standing for just a moment. I want to pray for everybody here right now. I don't think nothing in this world could make Pops more happy than to know that his sons, his daughters, nieces, nephews, and cousins, that his family accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Being saved is not being perfect. It's not about living a perfect life. It is about living a repentant life. David was not perfect in worship. He was perfect in repentance. Because whenever he made a mistake, he knew how to repent to God. The Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name while he is near. Now while you're alive, now while there's breath in your body, you can be saved. And according to the word of God, he said, if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, he says, thou shalt be saved. So now, Father, I thank you and I praise you for the life of Maurice Jones Garcia, better known as Pops. Thank you, dear Lord, that his testimony for us today is that you can give us life and that more abundantly. Now, I pray for every family member that have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray, God, that today, that even in this moment, that you would change their lives in the blessed name of Jesus. Everybody, just repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save me from my sins. I receive Jesus as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank God for saving me. I am saved. Now, I've asked you to repeat that prayer, but if you repeated it and you meant it, you are saved. If you repeated it and you meant what you just repeated, you are saved. And you can smile about it. You can be rejoiceful about it. And now all God wants you to do is to learn of him. It's to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, for this we give you glory, honor, and praise. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. And give God a big hand praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated.
my fault. It's good to know that you are there when I call. It's good to know. It was you who dried my tears and delivered me from all of my fears. 